an incredibly frustrating development on the Canada-China file. The two Michaels, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, who have been held for over 550 days, arbitrarily detained, being held hostages, really just as a tit-for-tat for Canada arresting Meng Wanzhou, they have now been formally charged with spying. On Friday, both on the same day, in courts that typically have a 99% conviction rate, this is not good news, and all Canadians should be dismayed by this and hope that somehow we can get the two Michaels back. There's also a lot of lessons in all of this. Coming just after Canada has been rejected from the UN Security Council seat, Justin Trudeau feeling like maybe if he pulls his punches on a whole bunch of issues around the world, that will mean world leaders like him more, that things go his way more. Well, that didn't cut it with the UN Security Council, and it's not cutting it with China. Word on the street was one of the reasons why Trudeau had not made a decision on Huawei entering our 5G grid was because he didn't want to further anger China and see negative developments with the two Michaels. You can sort of appreciate that, but then you go, well, where does that leave us? Does that mean that then they can just hold hostage another couple of Canadians anytime there's something that they want to push in their direction, anytime they want to get their way? Justin Trudeau still hasn't made the Huawei decision, and yet here we go, the two Michaels have seen their cases, unfortunately, develop in the wrong direction. Now, this comes after last month, one uh, court justice here in Canada did decide that Meng Wanzhou's case can continue, that it's not going to be thrown out as Meng Wanzhou's lawyers wanted. So China clearly unhappy about that, and they've made it pretty clear that they are unhappy with this in a government way, that these are government spokespeople, they're not just hair lawyers, they're not just Huawei executives talking, and it seems pretty clear that Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor are being held in retaliation, and they pretty much acknowledge that. What can we do to get them back? That's one part of the conversation, but what can we do to basically stand up to China, which is what more and more Canadians are asking for? The latest authoritative poll showing only 14% of Canadians have a favorable opinion of China as a government. Clear sign is the time to act is now. We can no longer tolerate their diplomats saying really offensive things about Canadians and Canada as they have been doing. If we need to make a decision on Huawei, which we do, all the experts say no, you must ban it. The United States basically talking about having alliances where Canada is not in on the conversation because we wouldn't be able to be trusted. We've got to ban Huawei. We have to do other proactive measures to decouple from Beijing as much as we can. Talking about putting a pause or a permanent ban on state-owned enterprises buying up Canadian firms during the pandemic. A lot of action items on the table. And this latest situation, well, it shows us that no matter how much you appease China, it's not going to work. In fact, it may even go the other way because they learn, oh, there we go. We can get leverage on Canada after all. We got to change our approach to all of this. And, well, we got to have all of our thoughts and, and our hopes and our fingers crossed for the two Michaels.